Hello everyone, this is Tallyson McKnight. Thank you for joining me today. Today, we will take a look at the fall of man from a Kabbalistic perspective. And we will also uh, take a look at the creation story from a Kabbalistic perspective. So, a lot of people study the Kabbalah and a lot of people, they understand about the Tree of Life, the Ten Sefirot on the Tree of Life. They understand uh, the Four Worlds, Atzalut, Bria, Yetzir, and Asiya. So a lot of people study the Kabbalah and the Tree of Life and all of that, but they're unsure about how to apply this to the creation story. Or uh, they're unsure of the Kabbalistic concept of the fall of man. Now, as you could imagine, the fall of man is pretty central to the Kabbalah and the creation story. So for those that study the Tree of Life and stuff like that, um, a lot of people are unsure of how to apply it to the text, or rather, to put it the other way around, how to draw this from uh, the text. So today, we will be looking at the fall of man and the, the creation story from a Kabbalistic perspective. And we will be looking at the original Hebrew. We'll be looking at the original Hebrew of the text. Now, it is impossible to put all of this to completely cover this uh, topic in one video. So I plan to do a series of videos, and later on, I'd like to look at the Zohar and look at what the Zohar has to say on this. But today, we're gonna look at this from a little simpler perspective. And I plan to do this in two videos. Uh, in this video, I'd like to talk about the process of creation. Now, on the Tree of Life, we have Keter. We have Keter, or Ein Sof. Keter is undivided unity. And you'll notice that rather than just creating, the process of creation is a gradual division and separation, a gradual differentiation from the primal unity. Keter is undifferentiated unity. To put it into the perspective of color, Keter is colorless. There, it ha Keter has no color, but all colors stem from it so that you may get red, green, blue, purple, black, all of these have their source and origin within Keter. And all of them are an expression or a revelation of Keter. So although Keter is colorless, all colors spring from it. So that here in this world we have red and blue and all these different colors. But they all have their source in the primal unity which is itself colorless. Or to put it another way, we have different sounds. We have high-pitched sounds, low-pitched sounds. They are all revelation. They are all self-revelation and unfoldment. They are an expression of the undivided unity. So, and in the process of creation, it is, rather than just creating, it is a gradual division and separation. It is a gradual process of differentiation from this unity. So, to show you what I mean, we will begin looking at the text. And again, I have the original text itself. So, we begin. What is this process of gradual separation and division? It says here, <clears throat> Genesis 1, Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim v'charetz. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Right there you could see a duality. 
V'charet ha'ita tohu v'vohu, the earth was formless and void. V'choshek al panei tehom, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. V'ruach Elohim arachethet al panei hamayim. So, there was darkness, emptiness. Vayomer Elohim, and God said, Ihi or, vayhi or. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Vayar Elohim et or ki to vayavdel. Yavdel means separated. Vayavdel Elohim bein ha or uvein ha choshek. And God separated the light from the darkness. Vaikra Elohim la or yom, he called the light day. The lachoshek kara laila, and the darkness he called night. Vaihi erev, vaihi voker yom echad, and there was evening and morning the first day. So on the first day of creation, there was darkness. And God said, let there be light. He spoke it into being. There was darkness and God created light. And he separated the light from the darkness. And the, the darkness he called night and the light day. And he divided the light from the darkness. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. So the first day there was darkness created light and separated them. Light and day, night and dark, uh, light and darkness, night and day. And there was evening and there was morning. So you can see the first day a separation and division, a differentiation. And of course both come forth from the Godhead. The second day, now we're on day two, Vayomer Elohim, Ihi Rakia. Rakia is a firmament, an expanse. Vayomer Elohim, God said, because he spoke it into being. Vayomer Elohim, Ihi Rakia, Batok Hamayim, between the waters. Vayhi Mavdil, separate. Bain Mayim Lamayim, and let it separate the waters from the waters. Vayas Elohim et Harakia, Vayavdel, and it separated. Bain Ha Mayim Asher Mitachat Larakia, Uvain Ha Mayim Asher Mayal Larakia, Vayhi Ken, to separate the waters above, below the firmament and above. Vaikra Elohim Larakia Shamayim Vahir Vahi Voker Yom Shini. So on the second so on the second day God created an expanse, a firmament, to divide the waters from the waters. The waters from below the firmament and above. And so the second day is a division to divide the waters above and below, to separate them. And the waters above he called heavens. So the first day you have darkness created light and divided the light from the darkness, day and night. And there was evening and morning the first day. The second day created a firmament to divide the waters from the waters, and there were waters above and below. So now we get to the third day. Vayomer Elohim ikavu and gather Hamayim mitachat hashamayim el makom echad and gather the waters to one place v'terai hayabasha and let the dry land appear v'hi ken v'ikra elohim layabasha eretz ul mikveh hamayim karayamim v'yar elohim kitov so we'll stop right there that's uh, Genesis 1 9 through 10 so the third day he gathered the waters to one place and let the dry land appear. So again, this is separation and differentiation. So the first day there was light and darkness. He divided the light from the darkness, evening and morning, night and day. The second day divided the waters above and below. On the third day gathered the waters to one place and let the dry land appear. 
So rather than just creating dry land, gather to one place and let the waters appear. Again, separation and differentiation. Vayomer Elohim tad shecharetz deshe esev mazria zera et pri ose pri lamino asher zarovo alcharetz vayhikin vatotzecharetz deshe esev mazria zera lamino hu veetz ose pri asher zarovo lamino hu vayar Elohim kito vayhir vayhivokir yom shalishi. So then on the third day, he said, "Let the uh, let." So he said, let the earth bring forth grass. So on the third day, let the earth bring forth plants. Uh, bring forth. So rather than just creating them, it's again differentiation. Think of the dry land and then it brought forth plants. This is differentiation and uh, separation, distinction from a unity. So again, first day light and dark separated, the second day the firmament divide the waters above, the third day gather the waters to one place, let the dry land appear, and let the dry land bring forth plants. So you can see that this is a differentiation. Now the fourth day, even more obvious, Vayomer, and God said, Elohim, Ihi morot birakia hashamayim, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven. Lahavdil to to divide, to separate Bain Hayomu Vain Halila between the day and the night. Vahayu Lotol to Modim Vashanim, Vayamim Vashanim, Vahayu Limorot Birakia Shamayim Lahir Al Haretz to shine upon the earth. The uh Vaihi Ken, Vayas Elohim et Shine Hamoral Tagadolim, Vetamor Hagadolim Shalatayomu Uhamor. So it says, he, God created two lights, lahavdil, to divide between the day and the night. And God created two lights, the day and the night. And God created two lights, a greater light to rule the day and a lesser light to rule the night. Vulim Shol and to rule over Bayomu Vain Halila Uvalila between the day and the night. Ula Havdil and to separate, divide Bain Ha Oru Vain Ha Bain Ha Oru Vain Ha Hoshek between the light and the darkness. Vayar Elohim Kito Vahir Vahivokir Yom Revi. So on the fourth day created two lights to divide the light from the darkness and to rule over the light and the darkness and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. So light and darkness divided, the waters divided, the waters to one place, dry land appear, the earth bring forth plants, the fourth day, day and night, and to divide the two. And what happens on the fifth day? Vayomer Elohim ishretzu chamayim shretz nefesh chaya v'ov yofef al charetz al panei harakia. On the fifth day, he doesn't just create birds, poof, birds, uh, animals. On the, four, on the fifth day, the waters bring forth life, and the air brings forth life. And on the sixth day, the same with the earth. The earth brings forth animals and beasts, and uh, it talks about the creation of man. So, rather than God just poof and creating things, it says that animals came forth from the ocean, or forth from the earth. So that's interesting, that we came forth from the atmosphere, forth from the earth. So the six days of creation are a gradual process of division and separation. And now that is the sixth, six days of creation, y'all. Hey, I'm in the, uh, could I call you back? Uh-oh, I'm sorry. Hey, I'm in the middle of making a video. I ain't, could I call you right back? I'm so sorry. All right, sorry. Yeah, sorry to hear that. All right. All right, bye. So anyways, gradual process of division and separation. I need to start putting my phone on vibrate. 
Now we get to the concept of the four worlds. There is what we call Seder Histal Shalut. It is the chain of being, which we have the four worlds of Atzalut, Berea, Yetzira, and Asiya. And these are mapped different ways on the tree of life. Atzalut, and if this is the order of creation, you would expect to find it in Genesis. So, um, Atzalut is the spark of an idea, the initial desire to create. And this is often linked to Chokmah and the Yud in the name of God. And so we all get a spark, a desire, initial idea to create. Berea, the world of creation, is Bina, the He. And this is logically planning out how we're going to do it. So you plan it out. Yet Zira, the Vav, the, the son, the father, the mother, and then the son, Vav, is, uh, is Yet Zira, which are the Sephirot from Chesed down to Yesod. And these are, this is the blueprint for creation. This is the plan. To put it into Platonic terms, these are the Platonic ideas which manifest in Malkut. So, to put this into microcosmic terms, let's say that you want to build a house. Atzalut is that spark of an idea. This is the Yud. Berea, or Bina, is logically planning it out. And we know that the father impregnates the mother. The Yud is the seed for the He. So, our idea impregnates our logic, and then our logic takes that energy of the idea and plans it out just like a baby is formed in the womb. And forming in the womb is the he, I mean the vav. This is the six days of creation, the six of from Chesed the Yesod, which is born and manifest in Malkut. So to put it in the, like building a house or sex with a lady and having a kid, Yud is the seminal spark of an idea, the burst of insight. I want to create, I want to build a house. He, the mother, Bina, or Berea, is logically planning it out. This is forming in the womb. And then Vav is the son. This is the form, the six Sephirot from Chesed to uh, Yesod, which manifests in Malkut. Now, the word Malkut means kingdom which is linked to several other words in Hebrew, such as melech, king, kingdom, malkut. Melech means king. Malka is queen. And uh, malaka means work or task. So the word malaka is close to malkut. And the word asiya means to make or to do or perform. So asa, malka, malaka, work, malkut, and asiya. This is the seventh day. Malkut is the seventh day, which is the Sabbath. And this is the Sabbath queen. This is uh, the Kala, the bride, and the Malka, the queen. The seventh day is the Sabbath. And this is the seventh day of creation. And we're running out of time. Okay, so this is just an introduction, basically. In this video, we looked at the process of creation. So this was just leading up. In my next video, I will talk about Malkut and the seventh day, and we'll get into the fall of man itself, and we'll see how man fell from his primal state of unity. And so, this was the process of creation, division and separation from Keter. In the next video, we will examine the fall of man. What was our primal state of bliss and how did we fall? And this is just part one, so we continue with part two. Hopefully, I'll see you there, y'all. So, thank you for joining me. Once again, this is Tally Sim McKnight. And study hard, y'all, and this ends part one.